Assalamu alaikum and good evening to everyone. This is Junaid Khalid, your course facilitator for F7 financial reporting paper. Okay, now today, uh, the topic which we are going to discuss or we are having a session on this topic, uh, that is ratio analysis. Or we can see that interpretations of financial statement. Now, uh, let's discuss uh, regarding this topic, ratio analysis or the interpretation of financial statement and of the, is one of the most important topic in F7 or financial reporting paper. Reason being, uh, from the last, if we consider, if we look after, if we consider the last uh, five to six attempts of F7 financial reporting paper, we can clearly observe this one. The examiner is continuously testing this area, that is the ratios and interpretations of financial statement in section C. That is, sometimes it comes uh, with the 20 marks weightage in the, uh, section C. Most of the time, examiner gives a requirement of final account and afterwards preparing the financial statement, examiner gives you a requirement to have some interpretations on that financial statement of the final account. Many of the times examiner also did that. Uh, it gives a question requirement of ratio analysis that interpretations of group accounts, that is the part A is that is to prepare the consolidated financial statement and part B that is to calculate the ratios and have your interpretation on it. So it means it's an important topic uh, sometimes it comes with a single question of 20 marks. Sometimes it comes with the part question of uh, the final account or the part question of consolidation, which means that this area is tested on 100% basis. So it means exam, uh, the candidates should prepare themselves for this topic in an extraordinary way. Now, uh, coming back uh, to the problem, most of the students or the candidates feel so, uh, uh, I will say that uh, most of the students or the candidates, are, uh, they have a fear regarding this topic. Reason that you need to write it down. You need to have your explanation. You need to give your interpretations and ideas, or you can say that you have to give some suggestion to the examiner, which is really a difficult task for the candidate. Reason being, if you look after, if you look, if you just have a look on the previous paper, which the students have already attempted in that questions, in that papers, in that exams, the students definitely have no uh, purpose of writing anything. Uh, students didn't uh, wrote anything over there. They just only have a face or they just only uh, give the answers of MCQs. That is multiple choice questions. But here you have to write it down. Now, the students uh, feel so fearful that how to write, what to write, how much to write. So these are particular questions that, uh, that uh, these are the frequent questions that uh, normally candidates ask to me that how to write, how much to write, and what to write and what not to write. So in this session, uh, I'll try to give you an explanation. I'll get, uh, I will try to give you a tick text that how to write or how to attempt the uh, ratio question or the interpretation of financial statement. For this, uh, I will uh, try to keep this video as uh, short as possible so that you can have a very conclusive ideas. You can have very uh, uh, deep understanding of this topic in a very less possible period of time. Now, let's start. Uh, once you uh, are facing with that question of ratio analysis or interpretation of financial statement, just keep few things in mind. And uh, hopefully, once you will end up with this video, uh, I hope, inshallah, you will have a very better understanding about this topic and you will be able to write it down. Uh, so let's start with the session or let's start with this topic. Interpretation of financial statement. First thing, first thing you must keep in mind that for attempting this question, you need to learn formulas by heart. I said you need to learn formulas by heart. If you haven't learned, that is the heart. Okay, don't misunderstand. This is the heart. You need to learn formula by heart. If you are, if you if you don't know the formulas of ratios, definitely you cannot attempt that question. And the good news is that once the examiner, whenever the examiner have tested this area, it always gives a requirement of ratio calculation, and that requirement is approximately around five to six marks. And that is not only the marks. Consider that in terms of percentage. It's a five to six percent of your paper. So it means if you uh, if you have uh, formulas in your mind, if you know the formulas of each and every ratios, now you can attempt that question to six percent. So it means uh, you have to learn that formulas by heart. So you the first thing is if you want to attempt that question, if you uh, and you know that that question is like a compulsory question and it's going to be in your exams. 
So you have to learn that all formulas. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, at the end of the session, I will share the formula sheet with you guys. So you can have a screenshot of it. You can learn that formulas. Okay. Now, number one, you need to learn formulas. Second thing is, second thing is, uh, once you have learned the formula, what examiner will be doing? Let me give you a brief overview of that question. Examiner will be giving you a scenario. And in that scenario, what might be the possible situations? Situation number one. Situation number one. Examiner will give you the data of two years. Examiner will give you a data of two years in which you have to uh, you have to make a comparison of year to year. For example, the data of 20x8 and data of 20x9. Now you have to give some your analysis on both the results of uh, you have to give some analysis on the results of 2008 and 2009 or 2018 or 2019. So what went wrong? What uh, what was the change? Why there was a change? It means the examiner will give you a scenario on a year to year basis. Number two. Second possible scenario could be a company to company. For instance, examiner may give you a data, may give you a data of two companies, may give you a data of two companies and on which you have to give your analysis. Whether the company A is performing good or company B is performing good, why also that's, you, you have to give comments on that one. Third situation could either be a comparison or you have, uh, uh, you will be providing with the data of a company and you will be given industry averages. So you have to compare your company. You have to compare the ratios of your company with the industry averages. And last possible situation could be uh, data could be given for a group. And the examiner might ask you that if we buy a certain subsidiary, what will be the impact on group? That means the addition of subsidiary or the most possible or most frequently tested area that is the disposal of subsidy. Disposal of subsidy. It means the position of the group, the balance sheet or the income statement of the group is already given to you. Examiner will, uh, might ask you that calculate the ratios if the uh, subsidy has been disposed of and what would be the effect on, or what would be the impact on the group, whether the group will, be, uh, whether the group will perform better or the worse, what will be the impact on the group. So it means you have to give some analysis or comments on that situation. So these are the four most possible situations that examiner might ask in question and you have to give some interpretation. Secondly, uh, third thing is you need to identify what the scenario it is. What is the scenario right now? Now, third thing is students or the candidates are uh, very confused regarding what to write and what not to write. Now, let me give you a overview that how to tackle the question of that ratio analysis. Always remember, whenever the situation is given, whether it's a company-to-company company, company comparison or year-to-year year or company-to-industry or group, always remember, whenever you will calculate the ratios, the ratios will either be increasing or decreasing. I repeat what I said, whether the ratios will either be increasing or decreasing. And believe me, there is no other option regarding this. You will definitely agree with me. If you have calculated a ratio for 20x1 and you are calculating the ratio of 20x2, there might be two possible situations, whether the ratio will increase or the ratio will decrease, whether it's a return on capital employed, it's a current ratio, it's a, whatever the ratio you are calculating, whether it will be increasing or decreasing. Most of the students or the candidates, what they do, they just calculate the ratios. No doubt you will gain marks over there, whether it's five or six marks. But when it comes to comment area, when it comes to interpretation side, what they do, they uh, let the examiner know that current ratio, okay, current ratio is increasing and it's increasing by this, 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 and full stop. Remember, it's a professional exam. It's a professional qualification. It's a financial reporting paper. Examiner is not expecting these type of lame comments. Examiner knows it very well that yes, it's if, if, it, if it is what 1.5 is to 1, now it's 2.1 is to 1. Definitely examiner can see this one that the ratio is increasing. This is not the comment. Yes, this is the part of your comment, but that is not sufficient which you from which you can gain your marks. So what to do? You have to give some reasoning on it. Whether the ratio is increasing, okay. So why it is increasing, that's more important. That is more important side. That is the more important side. You have to look after it. So uh, for this one, for this one, for this area, I'm just coming towards this one. If you have calculated a ratio, just observe 
that whether the ratio is increasing or decreasing. Remember, if the ratio is increasing, the ratio will increase and the reason could be, what could be the reason? Reason could be that there might be an increase in numerator. What does it mean? I'll explain you, don't worry. Numerator is increasing or, or, or the second possible option is denominator is denominator is decreasing. I'm giving you a tic tac. Okay. That's a shortcut. It's a shortcut uh, in a less possible period of time. How can you have a, how can you solve this question in a best way? Remember, if any ratios is increasing, if any ratio is increasing, there might be a two options. There might be two options, only two options. And what are those two options? Whether the numerator is increasing or the denominator is decreasing. So, uh, can you please elaborate this one? Let's have an example. Let's have an example for this one. Okay, relax. Just just sit down and relax. Uh, let's talk about the current ratio. That most easiest ratio, the favorite ratio of all students and the candidates. What is the formula of that current ratio? The formula of the current ratio is the current assets divided by current liabilities. Is it? Now, that upper side is obviously the numerator. That upper side is the numerator. And that lower side or the uh, downside is the denominator. Okay. Remember, if certain ratio as compared to last year is increasing. And remember, if the scenario is for the last year to current year from another company to one company or the industry average. All of these scenarios are almost same. There is no as such difference. You have to you have to concentrate on that rule which I'm letting you know. If you have calculated the ratio on in 2007 and if it is 2.5 is to one, okay, current ratio. And now you have calculated the ratio in 2008. That is the current accounting period. And now it is 3.2 is to one. Now the current ratio is obviously increasing. What I said to you. That if the current ratio is increasing, there might be two possible reasons. Two possible reasons. Either the numerator will be increasing or the denominator will be decreasing. What does it mean? Now you have to give comments. Now how to give comments and what on what areas to give comments. Just, just look after. Just look at that ratio. That Just look at that formula. What the formula is saying. The current assets is divided by current liabilities is equal to what current ratio. It means on the numerator side, there is a current asset, current assets, and on the denominator side, there is current liabilities. Now, if the ratio is increasing, it means there might be two best possible options. Either the numerator will be increasing. What does it mean? The current assets will be increasing, or the second option is current liability would be decreasing. Now, what, how to comment and what to comment? So you have to comment on the area that if the current ratio is increasing, that there might be a first possible option. The company might have increased their assets. Now, now just dig, dig it out, dig it out. Uh, what current assets do we have? Cash, very good, excellent, excellent. Cash, number two, what current assets do we have? Account receivable, what current assets do we have? We have inventory. I don't have, uh, uh, I don't have right now, uh, 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 I, I, won't, I won't be taking a lot more of time uh, in this uh, video. I will not be taking a lot more time. It's a detailed topic. If we talk about hours and hours, it won't be ending up. I would try to keep it very precise. There are other different current assets right now. Cash, account receivable, inventory. We have different office supplies and so on. Now, if the current ratio is increasing, now you have to give comments to the examiner. Yes, the current ratio is increasing. It's not a full stop. Now it's a comma. You need to continue, continue it out. The current ratio is increasing. Now give your best possible reasoning. You have to look after that scenario if there are certain hints. Let me explain you. Yes, current ratio is increasing from 2.5 to 3.2. And the best possible reason might be that company might have sold their goods on credit. Company might have sold their goods on credit. Now you have to look at the examiner data. What examiner has given you? For instance, if there are certain... Uh, uh, points if there are certain things which are already given to you hints or indicators that company has launched a new product oh my goodness so it's an indicator it's a hint 
that company has launched a new product and in order to increase the volume of sales in order to increase the volume of sales you need to give you need to sell those goods on credit to retain more customers so you can now link your scenario with that ratio yes current ratio is increasing and the best possible and might be what what might be the reason the company might have sold some goods or might have sold extraordinary goods on credit and this can be evident from the scenario most probably examiner might have given you given you a scenario or some kind of data or number 2 you can also verify this one by looking at the account receivable you can uh, you can you can witness this uh, this reasoning that company might have sold goods on credit this can be witnessed through sales data whether the sales is increasing or not this can be witnessed through this can be witnessed through account receivable turnover ratio you can definitely have a look on the account receivable turnover ratio whether the account receivable turnover ratio is increasing or decreasing so it means you have to give that analysis what i said increasing might be the first reason might be the numerator is increasing that means current assets are increasing one more possible option is inventory what does it mean there might be a possible situation the company might have sold or for example company might have purchased the inventory in bulk quantity for which for which company have extraordinary inventory level and you are having a inventory level at extraordinary level which means your current assets have increased and if definitely current assets will increase the current ratio will also increase so if current ratio is increasing you have to give some suggestion you have to give some opinion you have to give some reasoning that why it is increasing this will be able this then you will be able to gain some marks on that analysis otherwise if you would say yes current ratio is increasing that's very impressive very impressive company's performance is outclassed sorry to say this one but this will not give you sufficient marks this will not give you uh, average mark even i would say uh, examiner i would think examiner will not give you average marks even so inventory is increasing or and then you can also justify this one that inventory is increasing you can definitely verify this information from the inventory turnover or you can also give an explanation inventory might be increasing so that uh, or you can definitely link with the scenario if examiner would tell you that uh, there is a shortage of goods in market and goods have been short in the market and there is no uh, and the suppliers are not providing the goods so this might be the reason that company has purchased those goods in bulk quantity therefore the inventory level has increased are you getting my point so it means inventory is increased why you can give that explanation it's not necessary that you discuss each and everything which i am telling you but you have to give explanation to verify or to justify your comment you can say that you can say that inventory level is increased reason being there might be a shortage of goods in future or the supplier might leave that business so you have purchased that good in a bulk quantity in a bulk or huge quantity so that future stock outs can be pre uh, prevented another reasoning could be uh, first reason what i did what i give you what i give what i gave you that future stock out the word stock out is a technical term you need to use it out in your comments what does it stock out means stock out means that customers are placing an order but you don't have raw material or finished goods to provide to do, to those customers that is the that is the situation that is the position of stock out that you have orders you have orders you have customers but you don't have goods to deliver them so it means that you need to avoid a future stock out condition number 2 company might have purchased a bulk quantity in inventory so that the inventory has risen why to avail bulk quantity discount to which we say that trade discount company might have purchased bulk quantity inventory to avail trade discount so you can just imagine the comments which you are making that current ratio is increasing that's it full stop but that is not the end that is the start of your comments you can give that explanation now so what i said that if current ratio is increasing the first possible option could be numerator will increase and what is it on the numerator side that is current assets the second best possible uh, reason might be the current liability is decreasing you can also have comments on that area for example customers suppliers have been paid on discount Uh, after availing the discount so the liabilities are decreasing liabilities if liabilities are decreasing definitely current ratio will increase majority of majority of the suppliers have been paid out while availing the trade discount or cash discount 
So it means the liability would decrease. If liability would decrease, definitely current ratio will increase. So that is the tick tack. I would not say that you can apply on this ratio. You can apply that criteria, that technique on all ratios. Let's let's have a discussion on a most technical ratio and most favorite ratio of the examiner. Uh, if you look, if you have a look on part, uh, past papers, you will see that that ratio is frequently tested. A ratio question cannot be constructed without that ratio. And yes, that is written on capital employed. What is the formula of return on capital employed? The formula for return on capital employed is PBIT divided by capital employed. Now, what is capital employed? Capital employed is the amalgamation, is the sum, is the accumulation of accumulation of long-term debt, long-term debt plus addition. What? The shareholders' equity. The shareholders' equity. That is the formula of capital employed. And PBIT, that is profit before interest and tax. Someone says that IBIT, in, income before interest and tax, that's same. Now, return on capital employed. What I said, uh, to comment on this ratio, you need to, first of all, memorize the formula. Yes, you know the formula. You must have some linking about it. What does it say? Current ratio says you that uh, to pay off your one rupee liability, how much assets do you have? Return on capital employed. If you have injected that amount of financing, how much amount of profit, how much, how percentage of profit you are earning? If you have employed, if you have capital employed, if you have a total financing, capital employed is the total financing that in order to run that business, in order to run that organization, how much amount of total financing has been injected and how much amount of profit has been earned on that in financing. For example, for instance, you have invested 1 million from long-term debt and shareholders equity, 1 million, and you are earning 1 lakh rupees, 1 lakh dollar per month or per year, sorry, per year. What does it mean in order uh, uh, if I would say 1 million injected and you are earning 1 lakh dollar per year, it means 1 lakh divided by 10 lakh, this would make around 10%. It means you are earning 10%. Remember, the word return return represents the profitability. Word, uh, word return represents the profitability. It means you are earning 10%. You are earning 10% of your investment. If you have invested 1 million, you are earning 1 lakh. It means you are earning 10% of your investment. Higher would definitely be a greater side. Okay. So return on capital. First, you need to identify the formula. You need to learn the formula. Number two, you must know about it. So what the formula is and what it says, what the ratio says. You must have some basic understanding about that ratio. If we talk about the return on capital employed, we all know that return on capital employed is directly linked with two other ratios. That's why I said it's a giant ratio. It's a favorite ratio of examiner. You have much more area to comment on that ratio. Number one is the asset turnover ratio. Asset turnover ratio. And the third and the second one is the profit margin ratio. Profit margin ratio. Asset turnover ratio, what it will say, asset turnover ratio will let you know how much times this ratio will result in, in times uh, in the end of the session. Definitely, I will share with you the formula sheet in which each and every formula is mentioned. And it's a summary, it's a summarized sheet. Asset turnover will let you know, the asset turnover will let you know that uh, how much times the sales in being generated, the sales being generated after you have invested. And the formula for this one is sales divided by capital employed and profit margin what the profit margin will let you know profit margin will let you know the percentage how much profit you have earned how much profit you have earned by uh, or uh, how much profit you have earned on one rupee sale how much percentage of profit you have earned from one rupee sale the formula to calculate this one is pbit divided by sales for instance, if I sold a good, if I sold a good for hundred for for a hundred dollar, how much profit has been earned? For example, hundred dollar that is the sales uh, out of which cost of goods sold was deducted and operating expenses were deducted, and I just received twenty dollar. So what does it mean? Twenty is the profit before interest and tax. Hundred is the sales. It means twenty divided by hundred that is sales you will receive a percentage of profit, how much profit you have earned from the sales. 
now return on capital employed how much profit you have how much profit you have received by investing that amount this is this profit is dependent on two ratios that how much times you have made the sales and how much amount how much percentage of profit you have earned for instance let's let's take an example let's take an example <clears throat> if the company is selling a product and the strategy of that company is to say is to sell the product only once in a year i would i would sell one product in a one year but i will having a huge margin harley davidson the unique bike or i would say the most expensive bike if i'll be purchasing that bike definitely it's not commonly sold it's not commonly so it's not a regular item that has been sold a rare sales of would be recorded for that type of goods now the company's strategy is that is to sell only one or two bikes of 15 to 20 bikes in a year 15 to 20 goods in a year but definitely they will be receiving a huge profit margin on those goods so the strategy of that company that asset turnover should be lower asset turnover is lower but the profit margin is higher always remember if the company is selling any product there might be two possible options the the first is the two possible strategies the first strategy the asset turnover could be lower but the profit margin should be higher the another strategy of the company is let's have a low profit margin let's have a low profit but let's increase the volume of sales if i would say asset turnover usually deals with the volume of sales how much times do you sell your product on the other side profit margin deals with the profit percentage profit percentage how much amount of profit would you like to earn on a single rupee sale on a single dollar sales so it means if the company wants to increase the return on capital employed there might be two best possible options either to increase the asset turnover ratio or to increase the profit margin ratio so what if what if if we increase both if we increase the asset turnover ratio and if we increase the profit margin ratio it's outstanding but practically speaking that's not possible definitely if you if you will increase the profit margin definitely you will increase the selling price and once you will increase the selling price your turnover will be affected but in abnormal situation there might be possible that if you have a monopoly in the market definitely you will be selling that product on a high volume high profit margin high selling price and if the consumers don't have any other option definitely your turnover will not decrease but that's exceptional that exception that is exceptional okay so what i said okay, you 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 must have some information about it you must have information about it what is return on capital employed i will not be explaining every ratios in that video but i'm explaining this one because that is one of the most important issue with respect to your exam so return on capital employed is directly linked with the asset turnover and the profit margin now how are you going to comment this one what i said if examiner is asking a comment on return on capital employed definitely the situa situation would be company to company for example company a's return on capital employed is 20% and return and uh, the return on capital employed of company b is 30% now what you would say yes the return on capital employed of company b is greater and it's very good it's performing outstanding and it's brilliant it's a, excuse me it's not a cricket match that you're giving just like a comments like that oh it's a good shot it's amazing no you have to give some reasoning on it and what would be the reason what could be the best possible reason now let's come back let's let's come back again to that area so if the ratio is increasing there might be two best possible option that numerator will be increasing or the denominator will be decreasing what does it means that if i comment if, if i have comments on return on capital employed it means either the profit would be increasing or the capital employed would be decreasing now you have a large area to comment on this one man how let's 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 explore let's try to explore this one so return on capital employed have been increased why as because the profit increased and how can the profit be increased profit could be increased by asset turnover or it could increase by profit margin now you have to look at that scenario what examiner has provided you the details regarding the company's data 
if examiners if examiner is about to that company's strategy company has increased the sales price which means the company is targeting the profit margin area you can have comments on that that yes the return on capital employed is increased and the main reason which can be identified from the scenario that xyz company has increased the sales which means company is charging high profit margin now let's calculate the asset turnover ratio and if the asset turnover is, is decreasing this would be done this would be this would be the normal scenario if the profit margin would be increasing you will definitely observe the you will definitely observe in that question that asset turnover would be decreasing now let's have comment on that one this one that yes the profit margin is increasing and that's obvious that's sure that asset turnover would decrease as because the company is targeting is company's strategy is to increase the amount of profit rather to target the volume of sales rather target the volume of uh, volume of sales so it means you can comment on this one secondly uh, the denominator side uh, okay uh, if you talk about the numerator side <clears throat> there might be a possible there might be a possible option that companies operating expenses have decreased am i right you can you can you can have uh, you can uh, now see the scenario go to the scenario go back to the scenario and just look it out the operating expenses of a company and the operating expenses of b company if the operating expenses are decreasing what does it mean it means it means company has a good control on their operating expenses which means the company has a good control on the because of which the profit is increased and if the profit is increased that means the return on capital employed would definitely increase so what if the return on capital employed is decreased so what could be the possible option sales price has been decreased number 2 cost of production cost of goods sold has has increased number 3 operating expenses has increased and if operating expenses are increasing what could be the possible best possible option the operating expenses are increasing because of increase in depreciation now just look at the look at the scenario company might have purchased new fixed assets or non current assets because of which the depreciation depreciation for the year has increased company might have recorded a revaluation surplus because of which the price or the value of non current has increased because of which the depreciation for the year has also increased are you getting my point so it means uh, once you will dig it out once you will dig it out remember remember you have to you you must have good understanding of the numerator and the denominator what numerator consists of you can have comments on that area and believe me once you will try it once you will try to practice it out i can guarantee you you will definitely make a comments and you will make your comments in a best possible way hope inshallah so i hope uh, you have understand so i let me summarize with you guys Uh, what you have to do first of all let's uh, learn the formulas i'll show you the formula sheet right now after few seconds number 2 you must uh, link the scenario link the scenario link the ratio link the ratio with scenario uh, with scenario i just told you about that scenario might be uh, scenario might be a year to year or a company to company third one is the third thing you need to keep in mind whether the ratio is increasing or decreasing comment in such a way okay and fourth one uh, fourth thing you need to keep in your mind uh, 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 you must have some a very good conclusion at the end try to give a conclusion at the end fifth thing is uh, try to write down a paragraph comments in a paragraph form that's a tip uh, comments in a paragraph form but most of the time it's very difficult for the student to have a paragraph a long paragraph uh, sometimes uh, you just uh, forget the sentence you just get, uh, you just have some grammatical issues so i can recommend you you can go for uh, points or we can say that you can have your comment in bullet form remember uh, it's not recommended it's not recommended but i would say something is better than nothing instead of making uh, numerous mistakes in paragraph i would recommend go for bullet form as uh, in f7 or the financial reporting paper there is no professional marks uh, if you would inshallah move on uh, to the next paper that the next level that is sbr and sbl there are professional marks so there is no professional marks so you can definitely use that uh, you can have comments in a bullet form this will reduce the chances of error this will reduce the chances of grammatical errors so you can have comments in paragraph if you think you can do it it's good to go but if you think that you will make some blunder just go for the bullet form
i hope you will understand uh, let me share you with the formula sheet uh, i do have some handouts and um, uh, summary points of uh, all ratios like current ratio you can see that in uh, on your screen Sorry for distraction. I guess this is another chapter. Yes, now we're. Uh, I do have some handout uh, regarding this one. Uh, definitely, uh, if you want to uh, discuss with me, if you want that one, I can share with you guys. Uh, gross profit margin. Uh, there are certain uh, tick tacks. There are certain points which you can comment on this one. Uh, net profit margin, operating profit margin, asset turnover, return on capital employed, current ratio, quick ratio. Uh, these are, it's it's a detailed topic. Definitely, I cannot uh, have that topic in one session in a small video. Uh, but if you want that handout, definitely you can uh, contact me. Uh, but let me share a formula sheet with you guys so that you can have. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is we have. Uh, you can have a screenshot. Uh, I will move it on. I will scroll down this one. You can definitely pause the video and have a screenshot for this one. Okay, so these are the ratios. And one more important thing, one more important thing is uh, most of the time what examiner do, uh, what examiner has asked uh, that is to comment on the performance ratio. So you must know uh, what are the performance ratios, uh, what are the position uh, ratios, and what are the investors ratios. So you must have good knowledge about it. Uh, performance ratios are basically the ratios of income statement that is PNL. Position ratios are basically the balance sheet ratios. And investors are uh, very few. That is uh, 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 price earning ratio, dividend yield ratio, and EPS. Performance ratio usually consists of income statement ratios that is return on capital employed, that is profit margin ratio, gross profit margin ratio, like asset turnover ratio. These are the performance ratios. And if we talk about the position ratio, ratios, that is current ratio, quick ratio, uh, and uh, debt to equity ratios, and uh, gearing ratio, leverage ratio, these are the ratios of balance sheet. And uh, investor ratios have very few ratios, that is the EPS, dividend uh, yield ratio, and uh, others uh, are the investors ratios so that was uh, uh, that was the video i hope uh, uh, this would be uh, uh, beneficial this would be very beneficial for you uh, if you have any uh, concern if you want to discuss something you can definitely discuss with me uh, let me share my contact number with you uh, it's double zero nine two triple three double two double six seven two one you can definitely have uh, uh, this uh, number is on whatsapp you can definitely contact with me if you have any concern or if you wanted to discuss something, uh, definitely I'll be available for you. Thank you so much.